Well, friends, what a joy it has been to experience this moment of worship with you. Pray that you have been blessed by all that has been done thus far in this experience. We pray now that you would center yourself as we hear the word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Almighty God, for this moment, we give you thanks and we pray that you would speak to us. For we, your servants, are listening. Holy Spirit, have your way in this moment. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I hope you are excited for part two of this series that we've titled The Bible in Black. Looking at these lessons of life from prophetic voices, black voices that we find in Scripture. For part two of this series, I want to call your attention to the New Testament book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter number eight, beginning at verse number 26, concluding with verse number 31. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation of God's Word. Hear what the Word of the Lord records. Beginning at verse 26, as for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, go down south to the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning. He was seated in his carriage. He was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. So Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. And Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replies, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. My friends, this is the word of the Lord, and we say thanks be to God. For part two of our series, The Bible in Black, I want to use for this thought. I found what I was looking for. I found what I was looking for. My friends, one of life's most frustrating moments is when you can't find something when you really need it. You already know that frustration that comes over you when you've been rushing out of the house and you can't find your keys. You're already late. You thought you sat them in one place when they were actually in another place. And when you find them, to your surprise, You become angry and upset because they were hidden in plain sight the entire time. And it's not that they were lost. You were just moving too fast to see them. Have you ever had to go somewhere and you put in the address in the GPS and you still can't find the location of where you need to be? So you circle and you circle. And you circle and you get discouraged because being lost when you have somewhere to go is no fun at all. Or have you ever just sat for a moment and done a comprehensive review of your life and concluded that even though you've achieved some measure of success, you're still not as fulfilled as you want to be. And you say to yourself, I'm looking for something. I just don't know what it is. Because my friends, the truth is life has a way of leaving you searching for significance at every turn. And when you can't find the significance that you are searching for, life can often leave you frustrated. And I know I'm preaching to at least three or four people who are watching this stream that can already testify, Pastor, I have been searching. In fact, I'm still searching for something and I just haven't found it yet. Like my uncle used to say, I just can't put my finger on it. Yet you've achieved 
achieved some success, but you aren't totally fulfilled or satisfied. You've made significant strides in your life. You have degrees on your wall. People know who you are. People understand the position that you have in your company, in the community. They know who you are in your family, but there is still this empty space that you have inside of you because you aren't fully fulfilled and satisfied and you know there's something more. You know there's something greater that you're supposed to be doing, but you're still searching. You're searching, you're searching. In fact, if you are watching this stream right now and you're searching, I believe that you can then empathize with the reality of this powerful black life that mattered significantly in our understanding of the ministry of the early church. This brother is best known as the Ethiopian eunuch, and he shows us the significance of searching for true meaning for life. If, in fact, you're still searching, then this is your story. If you want deeper meaning from life and trying to figure out what's that next step, what's that next season, what's that next move to make, then this brother is going to speak directly to you. If you don't mind, just hang out on this side street uh, on the south road in this desert in Acts chapter number eight with me just for a few moments, and there you will will find the church being persecuted. The church is under attack. And your Bible says that by Acts chapter number two, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. They, meaning the apostles of God. And after the day of Pentecost passes, we see that the Holy Spirit is moving throughout uh, these communities and he is literally changing people's lives in droves. But by the time you get to Acts chapter number eight, Christians Believers in Jesus Christ, disciples of Jesus are being persecuted. And Luke, who is the writer of Acts, tells us and informs us that the one person who is truly persecuting the church is Saul. Before his conversion on the road to Damascus was a persecutor of the church. And the Bible says that Saul was going from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into prison because they believed in Jesus. And in the midst of this persecution, y'all, I like how Acts records this in chapter number eight because there is a preacher that has a, the audacity and the faith to preach in the midst of persecution. His name is Philip. Y'all, I like Philip because he is a man whose prophetic voice rings loud in the midst of this persecution. He is a man who remains remains faithful to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ despite the pressure of the socio-political empire that was trying to work against this Christian movement. And your Bible says in Acts chapter number 8 verse number 26 that an angel of the Lord tells Philip, Philip, I need you to go south towards the desert road and there you will meet a man. And he, Philip, goes at the direction of the angel of the Lord and there your Bible tells you that he meets the treasurer uh, of Ethiopia. Don't you miss your shout right there. He meets the treasurer of Ethiopia. Translated, he meets a black man who is wealthy, who is prominent, and who is powerful. Don't you miss it. He is traveling on the south road to the desert at the direction of the angel of the Lord. And your Bible says that he runs into the treasurer of Ethiopia. He runs into a black man who is wealthy, he is prominent, and this brother is powerful. Y'all, I like how the text describes him because you can all already read into the story that he is not poor, he is not a slave, he does not feed into any stereotype that we see painted of black people today. This brother is royalty. He is an owner. He is financially independent. He is responsible 
responsible. He's an investor. The brother is educated and here it is. He is spiritual. How do we know this? Because he goes to Jerusalem to worship. Simply put, this brother is a boss. This brother seemingly has it all together and your Bible says that he serves at the pleasure of Candace who is the queen of Ethiopia. That's what the text says and the Bible records that he travels to Jerusalem to worship. He, he, he goes there for one purpose, to worship God. And after concluding his time in worship in Jerusalem, this brother is heading back home. The Bible says that he's reading aloud from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. When he encounters Philip in verse number 30, who ran over and heard him reading from the prophet Isaiah. And Philip asked, he says, man, do you understand what you are reading? And here is what the man replies. He says, Phil, how can I understand unless someone instructs me? And then the Bible says that this Ethiopian brother urges Philip to get into the carriage with him and sit with him. And y'all, as I continue to read this text, the question that kept on pricking my conscience simply this why travel so far just to worship and then I had to ask a, another series of questions why travel so far to worship I mean wasn't the same God that he found in Jerusalem also available in Ethiopia why 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 go all the way to the holy city of Jerusalem to worship. Why pack your bags? Why gather your crew? Why, why take a road trip just to worship? Well, my friends, if in fact you've asked these very same questions about this Ethiopian treasurer, then you ought to hang out with me just for a few moments around verse 30. Because when Philip learns or hears him reading from the prophet Isaiah, and Philip asks him if he understands what he is reading, not whether or not he can read, the brother is educated, but rather is he able to interpret and make the messianic connection to the prophet Isaiah that he's reading about. And this man replies with something that you and I need to pay close attention to. He says to Philip, Philip, how can I understand this unless someone instructs me? Which informs me, my brothers and my sisters, that this brother traveled to Jerusalem in search for some answers. The reason that he goes to Jerusalem is, yes, he's going to worship, but he's also going there to search for something deeper. He went a great distance to find something that for him would prove to be life-changing. He went searching, and I am preaching to someone right now that you are watching this sermon, and even as I preach it, you are thinking about what you are searching for, what you have been seeking, what you have tried to find in in terms of something that presents meaning and purpose in your life and you are searching right now. As a matter of fact, that's exactly why you are tuned in to worship because you are trying to get some answers to all of the questions that you have about your purpose in life. Some of you right now, like this African brother, searching. You're retired and searching single and searching, married and searching, struggling and searching, maybe even rich and searching. You are searching for something deeper. And the question that I have for you as I preach this word is what are you searching for? What keeps you up at night that you're searching for? Because the truth is we're all searching for something. We're all trying to find something deeper to make life matter more. And honestly, my friends, I can sum up that which we are all searching for into one word. And that word is meaning. Y'all, I want to press this upon you because at our core, we are all searching for deeper meaning from life. 
We want meaning out of this life. We want to wake up every day and know that we didn't waste our potential. You want to go to sleep at night content that you are one step closer to fulfilling your God-given purpose and assignment. You desire relationships, thank you, Lord, that are more life-giving and that don't waste your time. You and I are always searching for meaning because we want something more from life. And the question that you should ask right about here is what actually makes life have meaning and then if you ask that question you have to follow it with another question and that is how do we find meaning in life what makes life have meaning and how do we find meaning in life well, I believe that there are some answers that this brother can provide for us as we unearth and exegete this Ethiopian treasures, treasurer's life. Because I believe if we listen to him and we watch his actions, he can show us uh, as we search to find meaning in life, how it is we actually come to find exactly what we are looking for. When you look and examine this brother's life, the first thing you will find on his search for greater meaning is that he had the audacity and the faith to search for meaning beyond his possessions. Y'all, this point is something that is not only practical, but it pushes us to think beyond the comfort of what we have. Because when you read the text, it's clear that this brother had achieved a high level of success. Like many of you who are watching, he had success attached to his life. And we know that the measure of his success was based on the position that he held. He is the treasurer of Ethiopia. By this alone, we know that the brother is successful. But as he goes on his search to Jerusalem, we understand something more. And that is, even though he's successful, he's not totally fulfilled. And so he decides to take a trip to Jerusalem seeking deeper meaning from life beyond his possession. I mean, it is clear when you look at his life, this brother is successful. He knows how to make money because that for so many people is the primary focus of life. You focus on making money. This brother knows how to make money. He knows exactly where the money resides. How do I know this? Because he is the treasurer of Ethiopia, but he has determined on his search for deeper meaning that after making money and after being successful and after having many possessions including a successful career he has asked the question that all of us will inevitably have to ask at some point in our lives and that is what more is there to life beyond possessions oh, I need to get deep with you this morning what more is there to life after you've achieved your level of success? Now, I don't want you to get it twisted because there's nothing wrong with having success. There's nothing wrong, in fact, with having possessions because the truth is you can do a whole lot with possessions because you have the resources. But my friends, in order to find meaning in life, at some point you must learn to give thanks to God for everything you have, but look beyond your possessions to something intangible, something that you can't necessarily touch or feel or see, but you know on the inside that it is real and it gives you meaning and that will last even when your possessions don't. Ah, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you, you may need to hang out a little bit with Jesus on the Sermon of the Mount. When he says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and dust and rust shall destroy, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven that will last forever. Because even Jesus understood that there are more important things beyond your possessions. And if you search after those things, you will find true meaning in life. In other words, I want to encourage you. Make your money. Be successful. Gain all you can. But the true measure of finding meaning and purpose is using your possessions to make a difference. In fact, his possessions, this Ethiopian eunuch, his possessions are what give him the ability to take the trip to Jerusalem to seek something more. But he realizes 
that after achieving, he's still seeking. Because whenever you are seeking deeper meaning in this life, unfortunately, what you have won't always provide the meaning that you seek. It has to be something deeper. And this brother teaches us to search beyond our possessions. But then, y'all, it gets better. Because the second thing that he does, a second action, is not only searching beyond his possessions, but he has the faith to tread in some unfamiliar territory. And I'm preaching to somebody right now that you have gotten too comfortable and too complacent in the territory that you've been treading in. And after you have mastered where you are, you have looked out and you said, God, I don't know if I can get that. I don't know if I can progress further. I don't know if I can get a higher promotion. I don't know if I can go back to school. I don't know if I can finish writing the book. I don't know if I can get to that next level in you. But this brother teaches us that if you are ever to find meaning in in this life, you must have the good sense and the good faith to step outside of your zone of comfort and tread in unfamiliar places. And the Bible says that he travels a great distance to Jerusalem, searching in an unfamiliar place for deeper meaning. He thought that the rituals of the temple would bring him closer to what he was searching for, but he declares to Philip that he doesn't understand what the scriptures say. Watch this because no one has taught him. This simply means that the brother went to church, but no one spent time instructing him, which suggests to me that he remained relentless in his pursuit even when he didn't find what he was looking for in Jerusalem. How do I know this? Because when he's on the road back home, your Bible says that he is still reading from the prophet Isaiah. He doesn't understand fully how to exegete the text that is in his hand, but his pursuit is so relentless. His, his ability to go into uncharted territory is so relentless. He says, if I open up the book, I trust God that God is going to bring me the answers that I am looking for. And here is what the text says. The text says, as he is reading aloud from the prophet Isaiah, your Bible says he gets a knock on his carriage door. And guess who it is? It is Philip, this prophetic preacher who shows up on a random road down south in the desert to an Ethiopian eunuch reading Isaiah and he comes at the dispatch and the direction of an angel of the Lord. Paul, stop, rewind, don't you miss your shout because the Bible says that as this brother is pursuing the word, God sends the answer to him, which tells me right here, my brothers and my sisters, whenever you step out on faith and go into uncharted territory, you don't have to seek too far because your God will send you the answer. And I'm preaching a word in season to somebody who's watching this stream. You can testify that the more you pursued, God brought purpose to you. God brought meaning to you. God brought the answers to you. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. You ought to seek and watch God bring the answers to you. Y'all, yeah, this blesses me because in his reading of the text, in his reading of the text, God sends him what he's looking for. And there's somebody watching this right now. You are worried. You are stressed out. You, you, you are telling your counselor and your therapist all about your troubles. Uh, and and you're, you're telling them how worried you are about the next step and about the next season of your life. Well, let me give you this word of encouragement. Don't you be dismayed. God will take care of you. I just encourage you to have enough faith to step out and go to unfamiliar territory and of bringing meaning to you. And yeah, I know it's scary. I know sometimes you feel uncertain and unsure about yourself. Am I preaching to anybody that can just testify? Yeah, pastor, I've had some moments of uncertainty and I have some moments where I'm not sure what's going to happen. But and, and I'm even kind of kind of angry because I don't see progress being made. Well, here's my encouragement to you. The more you step out and the more you trust God, the more opportunity will find you. I'm a living testimony. 
And there are some people watching this who can testify that opportunity has found you because you stayed faithful and you by faith stepped out. I got to tell you this quick story as I close. Uh, every now and then, Scarlett Grace and I, we enjoy going to the park on the weekend and we enjoy playing hide and seek when we are at the park. There's one p park in particular that we go to. And when we go to this park, it's a it's a wide open green space. It doesn't have any trees. It's just a wide open green space. And my daughter loves playing hide and seek in this wide open green space uh, because she likes to hide in plain sight because she always wants to make sure that her daddy can see her. Well, uh, here's how Scarlett Grace and I play hide and see. She says, Daddy, count, which suggests to me that I need to turn around, count to 10. She's going to run a distance and then I'm going to have to chase after her. So like any good dad, I turn around and I count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I always yell these words, ready or not, here I come. Now here's the trip that thing again about this park. I can see her. I know exactly where she is. Even though she's run a little distance away, I can see her. And here is what Scarlett never does in the game of hide and see. She never comes to me. No, she expects me to come to her, but she always knows. She always knows where I am and she knows that I know where she is. But she always starts the game by saying, Daddy, count, which means she speaks to me. And then when I am ready to come and find her, I know exactly where she is. I, she is not detached from me. She's hiding in plain sight. I come to her. There is somebody watching this right now now that after you've done all you can, after you said, God, I need you, after you said, God, I'm praying to you, after you said, God, I trust you, you've got to do your thing, step out on faith, go where you need to go, and I truly believe that God will come and find you. The opportunity will come and find you because God always sees where you are. He won't let you step out without knowing where you are. He won't let you traverse unknown territory without knowing how to come and find you, when you step out on faith, opportunity and meaning will find you. Why? Because it's attached to God. This brother teaches us, he teaches us some powerful lessons about searching beyond our possessions, using our possessions to bless others and to, uh, to, to, to be the key to finding meaning. But he also teaches us that at some point you've got to step out on faith. And you have to go into unfamiliar territory. And he teaches us thirdly that you must learn to trust Christ even when you can't trace him. Uh, because the Bible says this eunuch was sitting in his carriage. He was reading from the prophet Isaiah. He didn't understand exactly what he was reading or how to interpret that text. But you need to know that he was reading about someone who was going to have to die so that he could live. And when you read throughout this text and understand the chapter of Isaiah he was reading, it goes straight to Isaiah chapter 53. And here's the words that he was actually reading in the carriage aloud when Philip finds him. He was reading that he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth in his humiliation. Justice was denied to him. And who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The Ethiopian eunuch was reading from Isaiah 53. And my brothers and my sisters, these verses specifically were prophesying about the salvific work of the Messiah. He was reading about Jesus. He was reading. Reading. One dark skinned brother was reading about another dark skinned Palestinian whose black, black blood would be shed on a Roman cross, lynched by the empire for standing for truth and justice, and at the same time being denied the justice that he was standing up for. And along comes Philip to help him to understand that the man he's reading about is the one who would be persecuted and who would die, but he would raise, be risen from the grave. So so that everyone could find meaning in this 
life when they trusted in him. And the Bible says that after Philip preaches to this brother, they find a nearby body of water because now he knows he's got to be baptized. And in that moment, this Ethiopian treasurer cared less about the name brand that he was wearing. He cared less about his title or how much money he had. All he wanted to be was a disciple of Jesus Christ. There was something that touched his heart that gave him more meaning than his possessions when he read what Jesus would do to sacrifice for him and all of creation. And the Bible says that he was baptized and he trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And even though he may not have fully understood everything about Jesus, even though perhaps he couldn't trace him all the time, he knew that he could trust in him. And that's what you will discover on this road of belief in your life as you trust in God more. And that is when you begin to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God, you will find that God will direct your path. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but is there anybody that's watching this stream? You can testify right about here that, Pastor, I have trusted in God and I have seen doors open up. I've seen pathways made. I've seen mountains moved. I've seen haters moved. I've seen angels dispatched on my behalf, all because I trusted in the Lord with all my heart and I didn't lean on what I understood. Is there anybody that can testify right about here that he's still God even when you can't trace him and somebody is watching this stream and your word today is pastor I've got to trust him when I can't trace him I've got to trust him in my health when I can't trace him there I've got to trust him with my finances when I can't trace him there I've got to trust him with my job even if I may not have one next week I've got to trust him with my family I've got to trust him with my kids I've got to trust my God even when I can't trace him Somebody needs to hear in this season of uncertainty that you got to trust in the Lord. And this brother teaches us how to trust in God to find deeper meaning from life. He searches beyond his possessions. He has enough faith to tread in unfamiliar territory. And he trusts in the Lord in moments where he couldn't trace him. My friends, this black voice teaches us that when we search for something deeper, when we search for deeper meaning in this life, we won't simply find a what, huh? we'll find a who. We'll find a relationship with Jesus because ultimately that's what he was searching for. What are you searching for today? The theme of this service was Black Lives Matter. You've, you've heard uh, the amazing black history moment. You've, you've seen the constant theme as we continue to celebrate black lives in February and even beyond this time. Well, the question that I had in closing is how do we find meaning in the lives of those we've lost because of racially charged violence? How do they have meaning to us who remain in the struggle for justice. When I think about so many who we've lost to violence, police brutality, to racial injustice, I think about George Floyd. After George Floyd died, the video began to circulate on social media. And I was in my office and it popped up on my Facebook timeline and as soon as it popped up on my timeline, Scarlett came into my office and as she saw the police officer's knee on the neck of George Floyd, she asked me something that today still haunts my conscience. She said, Daddy, is that you? She didn't know George Floyd. She couldn't decipher. All she saw was a black man being killed by someone called to serve and protect him. And she just made the connection. My dad's black. Could that happen to him? And so I have thought, how is it that we who believe and continue to proclaim that black lives matter, 
How can we find meaning even in our brothers and our sisters who died? And so in preparation for this sermon, God gave me these words for a black voice that holds deep meaning for us today. The Lord gave me these poetic words in honor and tribute and memory of George Floyd. I titled this poem, If I Must Die. If I must die, let my death bring life. If I must die, let my blood heal the divide. If I must die, let my heart beat a drum for justice. If I must die, let my eyes see a new day of love. If I must die, let my feet walk down freedom's road. And if I must die, let my hands grasp those difficult to hold. If I must die, let my arms extend with grace. And if I must die, let my light shine throughout the human race. If I must die, let the world know my name. If I must die, let my legacy be for equality, not fame. If I must die, let my children remain proud. And if I must die, let the words Black Lives Matter be proclaimed aloud. And if I must die, let my purpose be clear. For then and only then will I know that my life had meaning the short time I was here. Friends, what meaning are you seeking from this life? Because I believe if you seek true meaning in Christ Jesus, your Lord, you'll find all that you're looking for. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, it's been our great joy to have you join us here for our virtual worship experience. I pray that something has been said or done that has drawn you closer into your relationship with Jesus Christ. You will find meaning in this life as you continue to grow closer in your relationship with our Lord. And you need to be a part of a church family. You need to join a ministry. Don't let life go by and not be associated with a church that wants you as a part of its family. And here at Cascade, we want you to join our family. We want you to know that there's a place for you here. No matter where you live, no matter what part of the world you are in, you can become a part of the Cascade family. All you need to do is go to our website right now and click on the Join the Family tab. Have, and there you can become a part of our ministry, all that God is doing here to bless others in the world. Well, friends, it's been our great joy to have you with us, and we pray that you would share this stream. Please tag someone in this. Let someone else experience what you have experienced today by sharing this worship service. And until next week, may you continue to live for God. May you love God. May you follow God. And my prayer for you is that in all things you would continue to stay the course. I love you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye.